it's now time to start our second session and it's a very full session. Um, so without further ado, I'm, I'm going to introduce um, a pre-recorded interview with Dr. A.T. Aryaratni of the Sarvadeya Shrambadana movement of Sri Lanka. Well, Goodwill is very pleased to be able to share the thoughts of Dr. A.T. Ariaratne in this interview. Born November 5th, 1931, Dr. Ariaratne is the founder of the Sarvadeya Shramadana movement of Sri Lanka. A devout Buddhist and a strong believer in Gandhian principles of non-violence, rural development and self-sacrifice, he has shaped the Sarvadeya movement in ways that forge a significant link between secular principles of development and Buddhist ideals of selflessness and compassion. As a high school teacher at Nalanda College, he conducted the first Shramadana work camp in 1958, which eventually led to the establishment of the largest non-governmental organization in the country. He's the father of six distinguished adult children, including Dr. Sharika Marasinghe, who will be speaking later on at the seminar. And he has led tens of thousands of family gatherings and meditations with millions of people throughout Sri Lanka and other parts of the world. He is the holder of the highest Sri Lankan civil honor, as well as a number of international honors and appointments, including the Mahatma Gandhi Peace Prize and the presidency of the World Parliament of Religions. And now something about the movement. Collectively, the name Sarvadeya Shramadana means welfare for all through our shared labor. And just to quote from the introduction to the collected works of Dr. Ayurantne, from its inception in 1958 to this day, the people's character of the Sarvadeya Shramadana movement has been distinctly retained. Working for the common man's benefit, securing the common man's participation to its maximum possible level in the developmental exercise has been Sarvadeya's aim." End of quote. The, the program begins with an invitation from a village for a discussion of what is needed and how it can be done. Assistance deliberately begins with, a, with seeking a change in the attitude of the villagers and satisfying basic needs is only the third stage. It proceeds through creating a village council, building a school and clinic, setting up family programs, creating economic opportunity so that the village e economy becomes self-sustaining, starting a village bank and offering help to other villages. In addition, Sarvadeya sponsors public meditations in which tens of thousands, tens of sometimes hundreds of thousands of Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims and Christians meditate together on each other's welfare using the Buddhist Brahma Vihara meditations, which are acceptable within all faiths. The organization insists on, on understanding the real needs of a peaceful, sustainable society. Dr. Aryaratne emphasizes that Sarvadeya is about awakening both individuals and society. So a very warm welcome, Dr. Ayuratni, thank you so much for giving us your time. And thank you very much. I, I'd just like to begin um, by asking you if, something a little bit about the kind of broader picture of spirituality and how it relates to your work. So, Sarvadeya Shramadana is explicitly rooted in 
Buddhist spirituality. Could you say something about what inspired you to root social development in spiritual principles? You know, we are living in a world where we have so many religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. And from a religion, we expect people to bring together other people who are not in their religion. But in actual fact, what happens is each religion promotes their own numbers and do not try to bring about everybody together. That's why in a way I'm fortunate in the Buddhist philosophy, though we call it a Buddhism or religion, it is an idea where Buddha tried to tell human beings, you people are the highest developed as well as the mind is concerned. Your consciousness is at the highest level of all known living beings. Therefore, you should be able to cultivate certain qualities that help the entire living world, humans, non-humans, and even nature, even plants. So he told us, first thing is, try to develop this idea of loving kindness towards all, with goodwill, goodwill towards all. That's why I was connected with the goodwill movement now for, for decades from the time I was visiting uh, London. So, first thing is, if you have any religion or any civilized belief, first thing is, you should forget yourself, your ego, and become one with the universe. So I factor is reduced to a minimum, it is minimized. The less you have the ego, the more you are universal. So that is the first thing, metta, we call it in Pali. In Sanskrit, we call it Maitri. In English, we can call it goodwill or loving kindness. Mm -hmm. But that is not enough as a thought. Just going to the temple and meditating on that is not enough. You have to put it into concrete practice. Metta has to be implemented. So wherever we live, in whichever part of the world we live, we find people are confronted with so many problems. Maybe an economic problem, maybe a political problem, maybe a health problem educational problem, climatic problem. There may be so many problems. So we can direct our consciousness, our thinking, our expertise, whatever skills we have, towards that problem. And how to solve that problem and help people to overcome that problem. Now that kind of thing is compassionate action. So second word he wanted us to remember and practice is metta is first, loving kindness, karuna. Karuna is compassionate action. So what we call development, welfare, charity, all these things come under that one word, karuna, compassionate action. And that compassionate action should not be done expecting anything personal in return. In other words, without any selfish idea. In other words, there's a third one, Buddha said, you must remember, that in mudita. Mudita is detached, dispassionate joy. Dispassionate joy. Joy coming out of service you do without any attachment. So, mudita is the third Dispassionate uh, dispassionate uh, uh, love or dispassionate joy, joy, you have to remember. The last one is when we do this type of work. I remember when I was doing this work as a school teacher, the people to oppose this was my head of my ministry. 
the second third people, the top men in the ministry said, the, the, the task of a teacher, you are a teacher teaching high, uh, I mean high level students, university entrance students and so you should, being a science teacher, you should be able to do your subject well and get passes at the examination. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to do with the villagers huh? and all that. I said that may be your idea of education. I publicly told them and challenged them. And I said, to me, education is through whatever subject you teach. It may be English, it may be singular, it may be Latin, it may be mathematics, it may be science, history, or anything. Whatever you teach the student should help the student to awaken his or her personality to the fullest, to develop loving kindness, mm -hmm. compassionate action, altruistic joy and equanimity. That the equanimity is facing both loss and gain without getting disturbed. Accepting praise but not getting elated. Accepting blame without getting discouraged. So these four qualities are the first objective we had in mind for our students and the participants to build a human personality. Number two was we insisted those individuals who came and participated in our camps maybe all kinds of programs we did, for them to get the family members involved and, and within the family also to develop these characteristics. What are these characteristics? While for the individual you have these four, metta, karuna, mudita, upekha, loving kindness, compassionate action, altruistic joy and equanimity, within the group, say the family, you should practice sharing. So dana is sharing. Shramadana is sharing your energy, your knowledge, your expertise. Shramadana. So dana is sharing. So you should share within the family. Second, you should speak kind language, priyavachana. That is, you should not carry tales. You should not speak untruth. You should not speak harsh words. You should not waste time just gossiping. Avoid those four things and develop right speech. That is Priyavachana. Third, Arthacharya. Arthacharya is now when you are in a camp or it's a Rode program, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't uh, do anything that is not acceptable in society. So morally you are very high. Maintain it in everyday life. Uh, Arthacharya, that is called Arthacharya, is constructive way of living, constructive action. Mm -hmm. Then the last thing is equality in association. Uh, Samanathata, equality in association. Equality here means that you should not treat people because of their caste or the education or class or their wealth they, or the position they occupy or the country from which they come, you should respect people because they are living beings. They are people. Even a tree, you should respect. That is why without throwing a water outside, just put it on the, to feed a tree, you know. So like that, those four principles, sharing, person language, constructive activity and equality in association. Now these are for the family and the group. Okay. So when you work on those eight principles, we turned to society and found there is poverty, there is unemployment, there is lack of education, there is a lack of health facilities and all that. And then when you see these things, we thought that we must, if there are no toilets in a particular village, let us go and get the people to understand the importance of having toilets and then get together with them if they need a hundred uh, uh, man days of labor, if they can provide only 50, we will bring the other 50 from outside. If they have cement and 
something if they don't have iron or material to build those things, we bring them from outside. We ask people who can't come physically to help us to buy some cement and sand and iron and skilled labor. So that way we contribute. And then the poorest community, without depending on the government or politicians, then they begin to think we have a power within ourselves. So gathering this people's power, people's strength, and putting it in a scientific way to development, not just casual, charitable kind of development. A development in a scientific way, so if they have a 10 mile long ro road to the village which has to be built, people go from house to house, beg for land, get the land, then the labor, then they do it. And they have, a, we say we build a road and the road builds us. Road builds us to develop love, kindness, cooperation and all that. So like that it comes to the village now. Now we believe that Corona or anything in this world which goes against our day-to-day -day healthy life can be fought, not by government forces or organizing armies. They can be fought by building village level, community, community level organizations with proper knowledge, scientific approach, and getting people themselves to implement, then you can stop that. Even in this country today, that is what we are doing, while the government is trying to do it from top to down, we help them, we take part in whatever they do, but we believe in what we are doing more than anything else. From the bottom up, we try to get the people to fight this coronavirus. So that way, nationally, then in our work, we always try to get associated with similar international organizations. That's how maybe, I don't know, maybe 40 years ago, when uh, my friend was in England, I was, every time I went, I went to the headquarters of World Goodwill. Similarly, organizations like that all over the world, which was promoting Goodwill, Saro, they promoted that. That is, we show the world awakening. Mm -hmm. So power show their personality awakening. Kutumbo their family awakening. <coughs> Community awakening. Drama their. National awakening. They show their and we show their world awakening. Those are the five objectives for which we started 62 years ago and still going on. That's wonderful. I, I actually. <laughs> You've basically more or less answered my next question because you, you, what you've talked about is the way in which the different levels of awakening all interact with one another and build upon one another. And I think it's, it's beautiful the way you describe that, that, that sequence. And uh, it, it's like, I mean, people now talk about localization I mean, it sounds like you've been doing it for 60 70 years um, basically building from the ground upwards and uh, what, what I also receive from what you're saying is that um, the importance as you've said of building these fundamental qualities of consciousness into the whole process right from the beginning because otherwise it wouldn't have this. It wouldn't be able to sustain itself. Now you see, today the whole world is in a crisis because of this unseen but very powerful virus. Mm -hmm. Now that is because the this little thing, unseen thing, has taken full control of our lives, our society, our government, we are helpless. Why? Because I, I mentioned uh, certain eight principles with regard to the individual and the, the, the group. Similarly, there are certain principles we have to follow when you come higher and higher up to the world level. 
I am not going into those details, but they are in Buddha's teachings, what is called five cosmic laws. He says human beings can pass any laws in their parliament or by their kings or rulers. But remember all those laws are subservient to five cosmic laws. Cosmic law pertaining to genes. Genes, genetic order we have. Don't try to disturb the genetic system. Now, scientists can look into what, to what extent the genetic system, genetic order, genetic cosmic law has been disturbed. Mm -hmm. Because it is disturbed, here is a little virus <laughs> that is eating back. Oh, we are to You see, first cosmic law is that, Bijaniyama we call it, cosmic law. I don't know any other English word, I call it genetic. I, do, I haven't seen anybody giving an English thing. I have called it genetic uh, cosmic law pertaining to genes. The second thing is cosmic law pertaining to seasons, the See. climate in which you live. Mm -hmm. So you should not do anything, meddle with the climate. Buddha says, don't meddle with the climate. Let the climate function as it does. Now what are we doing? We are poisoning the air, the earth, water, everything in our control in the name of development. Now we are, our cities are the most polluted in the, today in the world. Similarly, villages are getting the same kind of pollution. We are cutting down our jungle, destroying nature totally. So environment has to be protected. That is why Buddha says, Bijanyama number one, Uttunyama is season. Third thing is Kamanyama. Kamanyama is what to do. That is, see that whatever you do to make your living or make your economy grow, that does not disturb the uh, disturb the, the existing natural order. In other words, what in the modern day they call it sustainable development. Mm -hmm. The third principle is that they have common yama, cause and effect. Remember, whatever you do, if it results in there is the effect. So you have to be careful. That is the third one, Upunyama. Upunyama. Vijaniyama, Upunyama, Kamanyama. Fourth one is. Kittanyama. Uh, hmm? Very important. Kitta is a mind. Kittanyama. Mm -hmm. Now, why I was attracted to world goodwill was. It was trying to promote Ittanyama, according to my philosophy. Mm -hmm. That is, well, goodwill is trying to get all these people who believe in religion, good things, to come together, promote goodwill in the world. And that's great. For 90 odd years, that has been done. And it should continue. In such time, we can say, yes, the whole world is now saturated with world well goodwill. So actually, <laughs> Uh, uh, the, so, uh, thinking of the mind, if in my mind in the morning, in the evening, in my relationship with my wife, my children, my friends and others, neighbors, whoever I meet in life, first thing when I see him or her, may this person be well and happy. May this person be well and happy. If you can extend that, thought, it goes into that person. And if that person will send it back, so there can be a situation where in the human community, this force of loving kindness, this force of goodwill, become a critical mass. 
So this is what is called critical mass of spiritual consciousness. Nobody else gives it. No God or any other unseen force gives it in within us. The God is within us. So we have to generate this kind of loving kindness. Never any ill will. Never any jealousy. Never any hatred. Never any competition. If somebody does well, by doing good, so much so we are happy. If somebody does well by doing bad, consequences will come to him. We will be we are not angry with him. But we say don't do bad and then earn money. Do good and earn money. It's okay. Mm-hmm. And then, so this kind of kittanyama uh, or building a critical mass of spiritual consciousness to transform the entire thinking of the world is necessary at this time. Absolutely. And the last one, I don't know actually an English word for that Dhamma Niyama. Dhamma Niyama is where human relationships uh, may be very different from level to level, person to person, country to country. But all those human relationships should not violate any of these dharmas. For example, do not try to do not try to say killing is good. Killing is always bad. Mm-hmm. So non-violence we have to accept. Selfishness is not good. It always brings about disaster to oneself or others. Like that, dhamma niyama, that is righteousness, a cosmic law of righteousness should rule in all our actions. So these five, I always remember during the last 62 years, in all the work I did, I remember these things. So, uh, what you're saying, I mean, one of the fundamental principles upon which Walga Will works, as, as you know, is that goodwill leads to right relations, as you say, and it leads to, I think, what you're that the fifth law that you're talking about, that, that relations become harmonized among all the different kingdoms of nature it, once one works with those principles and, and, and laws that you're talking about. And it, it just occurred to me, I hadn't, hadn't really thought about this, but you were born in 1931, and World Goodwill was actually set up in 1932. So <laughs> the, two were, the two were more or less born together. Um, and I think it's it's beautiful that that you're taking these ancient and in inverted commas ancient principles of, of spiritual wisdom and showing just how supremely relevant they are to the modern day and, and will continue to be relevant. Will always be relevant, as you say, because they are cosmic laws. They are laws that are at the very basis of of reality and and uh, and and can transform hum- humanity and the planet if we're willing to allow them um and if we could continue to seek to promote them and, and apply them and is uh, you, you cooperate with um the United Nations as well, I think, in, in the process, or, or in the processes, as you're saying, you cooperate with government when you can, and you cooperate with other civil society organisations when you can. When the the model of development that they're promoting is one that is in harmony with this one, which allows the two the two groups to work together. Yes. Actually, more than ever before, the time has come for organizations like Sabrodel, World Goodwill, and other similar organizations, Mm -hmm. which are not extremist anti-government organizations. We are not extremist organizations. We cooperate with government whatever good they do. We don't cooperate with them if they do bad, motivated by politics, that's different. So we should now, both in the field we are working and also in the formal sector, United Nations, government, 
we should pay more attention to bring over ancient wisdom mm -hmm. merged with the modern scientific findings. In other words, modernity and the ancient wisdom should be combined to face the challenges we are going to face in the future. I know we will overcome this person virus problem. Uh, I know it's worse in Sri Lanka today. We are also going through a third stage, they say. But we can overcome this. Even if several millions die, still there will be others left to build a new civilization. While we have that kind of thing in mind, we should remove the causes that led to this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Now, while all these things are happening, while people have no food to eat, black marketeers are trying to make money out of this situation also, where people are starving. Mm -hmm. It's a reality. So how can that human race survive? They should be, they should just disappear from the earth and allow other elements and you have to live on this planet, you see? Mm -hmm. So human beings have to enlighten themselves. Then only humans can survive and others can survive. <laughs> that is mine. And I'm so happy that I have led a life. I very often think, is there anything that I have done for which I regret? There was hardly anything, <laughs> because I never allowed my ego, now all these awards were given. I was never attached to the, the owner that gave me that or the money. I gave away everything. I have today nothing. I don't possess anything physical except the day-to-day -day needs I'm provided with. I have nothing. but. Tens of thousands of young people have taken up this and all over the country in about maybe 20,000 places they are working. Mm -hmm. And at the national level they have organized 16 national level organizations which include from spiritual to economic alternatives in the society. And they are doing well while most of the businesses in the country during the last four months were running at a loss. Our sorrow, their economic activities were running at a profit. Do you know that? We, we, are, our, we have no profit motive. Mm -hmm. Our economic development programs have no profit motive. Neither we are going to lose, but we have the righteousness. Now, in our in our uh, uh, annual report, this is the annual report of, of our economic, uh, uh, this annual report of mm -hmm. our Sarvode Development Bank, mm -hmm. best mm -hmm. of goodness. So mm -hmm. this is supposed to be the best report and the best micro credit organization today and it's everything scientifically analyzed. But behind all this is a philosophy that is, uh, uh, <laughs> that, is that is based on spiritual values. And I think that, again, I was, I was going to ask you a question, but I think you've more or less actually explained and covered what I was going to ask you, which is that the fact that crisis like the coronavirus, like there have been other crises that Sarvodia has faced and dealt with, is it another opportunity for increased spiritual development, increased um, application of spiritual principles to um, social problems and social issues? And I think it's wonderful and I think it's lovely <laughs> that you say that <laughs> you have no profit motive and yet you're, in pro you're, profit you're profiting. <laughs> Which I think sums up just how um, 
how wonderfully the, 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 your system works and I, I think it's beautiful what you you have done and are doing and continuing to do I know through all the many organizations the many branches of mm -hmm. Sarbodia um, and I, I don't have any other real questions for you just to just to say we're, we're deeply appreciate and have always appreciated what you do and I think it's, it's the connection that has been between our organizations which uh, Steve Nation of course sends his, his very best wishes to you I know you've had that personal connection and I know that other people in Wagga will also have a connection with, with those of us who have got into this kind of work Mm -hmm. There is no limit. Of course. Even when you die, you will, after that thought, you will continue to do the same thing. Oh, you yeah. know, because there is so much of joy of living we get. Those who have money and power, now Mr. Tom would have been very happy for last week. Oh, I'm going to win again, I'll be a, a second term. Now he has lost. So he's hesitating even to leave that. You know, what is the use of all this power and money and fame and all that compared to your own mind and heart where you say, hey, I am a happy person. Because of me, I have been able to make the hunger of thousands of people eliminated. I have given shade for thousands of families to live. I have provided drinking water to so many thousands. I have helped to education for so many children who have had. Now what a joy you mean, I am nothing. Nothing in worldly I possess except the day-to-day -day need. No land, no properties, uh, not even uh, in Taro, their banks, I have any money, nothing. But I am the happiest man on earth, I can say. I can challenge anybody and say, you challenge me that you are happy. No, I am happier because I have nothing. Even in my mind, I have no jealousy, no anger. But people have been doing a lot of harm to my work. Not a single government for the last 62 years, except saying that Aridas is a great man. They have not given five cents for my work. Mm -hmm. They have not given any help, I completely say, even today. Nothing. But we still survive. And profit. We are happy. <clears throat> because the work is really continue our work. I'm happy. I till you call me, till Tarika told me I didn't know that the World Goodwill is still doing good work after ninety odd years. I'm so happy. So my goodwill, my all my blessings and my blessings are not like other people's blessings. <laughs> my blessings are really blessings without any expectation or anything in return. So I wish well good will continue to serve to the world till we can say we are one humanity, one family, one world and one peace. No division. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time and for your for your life and your your work. And may we continue to be associated, as you say, through through the rest of time. Thank you again and um, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>